We gather storms, never knowing what they'll mean. First of all, my last interview, Blake, guess what Brandon did for me? What? What? I'm he did the wine. <gasps> Go on. What about you? What do you like? Yes! Uh, <laughs> yes. That's what it is. It's but Blake, I have a question for you yeah. because I like you doing Brandon doing Atlas. So can you do the line? Well, she she really likes she likes to lean into it. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I like it. It's just but like how he does it. It's it's you know it's not the it, his his uh, if you just hear the line honestly it doesn't sound like the thing. It's the mischief on his face. Like he is such a stirrer when he says that. So when you see this line, he's standing in front of her boyfriend and her group of people who have no idea that they have the history that they have. Just as some waiter, he knows that he's uh, who he is in this restaurant. I'm not going to say what his role is. And, and he knows their history and she knows their history. No one else does. So for him to take her order and go, what about you? What do you like? And you're just like, he knows what she likes. It is a wild thing to say. And it was not in the script. And it was crazy. And when I found that in the edit, I was like, oh my God, why is this not in the movie? Um, and then it became not, it was not just my favorite moment, but just everybody in that room was like that line. And then it, we, we, we started quoting it. Every time we ordered lunch, it was like, you know, I'm getting this. I'm <laughs> getting the you? using salmon. What about you? I mean, what do you like? What, it, it's sweet <laughs> greens. What about you? What do you like? And a taco <laughs> salad for me. You know what I like. <laughs> Pop tarts. But it was like, it was coffee orders. It was everything. So, um, yeah, it became like a sort of an iconic line. Cool. Yeah. I'll take it. And now, and My now I'm asking out. about it in interviews. It's going to take on a life of its own. Yeah, no, no. It really, it really is. I want it on a hat. Shirts, yeah. you know, I want it on like a cool dad hat. Yeah. A <laughs> dad hat. So what about yes. you? What do you like? Yeah. Maybe what about you on the front and what do you like on the back? Yeah. But you got to see his, fa his face in that moment. Oh, I've seen like, it. Oh, it's I've great. Seen it. It's the best. Read the book, seen it. I'm hook, it's line, and best. sinker. I'm sold. <laughs> so, um, so Blake, you've heard of a blank stare. The you Colleen, heard of the expression, a blank stare. Is it the Colleen bitch face you're talking about? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, sorry. I I want to coin a new phrase, death and chair. that is no. But first death of all, chair. tell me what that is. Oh, it's just it's the Colleen this. Hoover death stare. <laughs> you know, it's iconic. That's good. You're getting all the iconography yeah. of these two at this moment. Yeah. This is what I want. Yeah. I want no, no, it's <laughs> great. Um, but what I was talking about was, I want to give you an award. We've heard of a blank stare, but I want to coin a new phrase, the Blake stare. Oh. Because you, nobody stares better in a film. And kudos to the editor for holding on that stare, where I know exactly what she's thinking. And when she looks at Atlas and when she looks at Ryle, there's love and prize, but in two totally different ways. Aww. So I want to ask you about creating those looks. Is it something that you're getting off each actor that is informing those looks? Because I feel like I could stare at you staring at them all day. Oh, that's so nice to say. Um, well, I just really love romance and I love it as an audience member and I love it in my real life. And I just really like believe in romance. I think that like Baz Luhrmann and I are probably the two people who <laughs> love romance more than anyone ever. Like I see fireworks um, and I realize it's probably, you know, visions of fireworks, but like that's, that's how I, I, I just love romance. So Colleen, um, made the relationships, the, the draw of each character so clear that I knew exactly what Lily was feeling and, and it wasn't linear. And I think that that's why those looks can be a more interesting experience because it's not like, oh, I'm in love with this person or I'm attracted to this person. There's so many layers to it. So with Atlas, there's so much friendship and there's so much trust. And then there's so much regret and guilt and sadness because of, you know, th things that happen that may not have been in her control and, and, you know, missed opportunity. And then with Ryle, there's, there's, um, a, a deep attraction, but there's also, you know, you know, when there are red flags, even though you're not ignoring them, there's something subconscious and then sometimes conscious. So there's just so many different um, feelings happening at once at all times that it makes it easy to look and feel a lot because she laid that, that groundwork. Yeah. I've only given that award to one other person. Ooh. It was actually another Canadian Ryan. <laughs> not your oh, Ryan. really? Not my Ryan? It was Gosling. Yeah. Oh, wow. For what? For what? Just in general? 
in general, La La Land, like he gives yeah. those love lorn looks. Yeah. yeah. So like he's the king, you're the queen. Oh, wow. My gosh, thank you. <laughs> I think my Ryan is the king. <laughs> he's so romantic. Is he? <laughs> the stare, Gosling's got that stare thing for sure. He does that stare So thing. you're also not voting for my Ryan? Well, I think Ryan is incredibly romantic. By the 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 I mean he, uh, the way he wines and dines me. No. <laughs> didn't Ryan no, wait? Didn't I think, Ryan slide into your DMs and actually wanted you two to be together when he saw the film? You're Ryan. He me. was like, oh my gosh, he loves her so much. Yeah. Oh my god, he like he loved like he loved Lily and Atlas so much. He was like, I want you guys to be together. Like he just like <laughs> is like literally cheering along. But it's but it's true. You see this movie and you're like, I want them together. Like they love each other so much and they can't be together and it's not a love story with those two and that's what's beautiful is like you feel so much love but the the their entire love is based in friendship yeah. and it's based in trust and honesty and like that's I think why you just like feel so much with them because it's like the romance is just the layer on top of the everything else that they the romance have. is like the bonus feature you know it's yeah. not it's not the basis of their relationship which most relationships you see in media are these like romance based relationships that are based in lust and like heat and this like codependency sort of thing. That's most of what poems are about and, and music and movies. And it's really beautiful to see a relationship between two people that is rooted, like you said, in friendship mm -hmm. and in like unconditional love. Mm -hmm. It's 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 they're truly just there for one another. And it's not about possession or mm -hmm. what can I get from you. It's like I'm truly just here for you mm -hmm. in service of you. Um, and it's, I think it's such a beautiful relationship um, that she came up with, you know. It really is. Y'all are so sweet. Yeah. It's so <laughs> She's special. She's married to her high school sweetheart, I though. Know. <clears throat> She's real life Lillian Atlas. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I know. Nice. I've seen your throwback pictures guy. of you together. It's, yeah. it's and he's such a sweetheart. Yeah, he's such a sweetheart. Yeah, the real life Atlas. None of this is your fault. As hard as this choice is, we break the pattern. Or the pattern breaks us. I love, 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 love you both, Colleen. And I love, 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 love this, this movie. Oh, thank like, you. Beyond. This movie is beyond. The casting is incredible. Um, first question I wanted to ask you, why, why is Blake so obsessed with this line? What about you? What do you like? <laughs> You're asking me? I'm asking both of you. Oh. But most, yeah, Brandon, you can answer it first. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> so I can, I can answer that a little bit. We yeah. were okay. in the um, editing room, and every time that line would come on, our editor just would go insane over the way he delivered it. And so it just kind of became this thing where he would replay it when he wanted to get pumped up. And you weren't even in there, so I don't think you, you knew how much we watched that scene of you going, what about you? What do you like? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even think it was in the script. No, I just improvised it. Um, <laughs> seemed like a thing Atlas would say, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like... Work, it's it like work. inferring a lot, you know? I mean, there's a lot under there. It's subtle, but there's a lot under there. It's like, I know what you like, <laughs> you know? Exactly. I know who you are. I, was there. I yeah. know who you like. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and I know, Colleen, your favorite line in the film is, I know I was there, um, which was in the book. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so a like, good one. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. I mean, for you, Brandon, like, first of all, that line and some iconic lines from the book can you just sort of describe the day on set? Like, was there extra pressure for those those iconic lines? And do you have a favorite line, either from the book or from the script that made it in the film that you were like, I can't wait to play this scene and I can't wait to say this line? Yeah, I mean, it's a really, um, it's a good question. There are certain, certain lines that and it happens in every project but especially this one because they are from a book and it's my job to make them feel like they aren't a line from a book and there's certain yeah. scripts and certain lines you're like damn this sounds like a line in a movie and i have to somehow make this not sound like a line in a movie and i love that challenge because it's challenging 
especially shooting that scene because yeah. I remember I had to like go towards the door and then like turn and be like, oh, yeah, I know I was there. And every time it felt like I was like, oh, God, it kind of feels like I'm doing a commercial or something. I was like, I know I was there. And I was like, all right, we got to keep doing this. And then I would just make myself laugh because it felt like it was like a slow like, yeah, I know I was there. And I was like, damn, how do I make this like real in this moment? But I honestly love that line. I love the fight scene. Yeah, I, I love too. the fight scene. I'll cut your hand off and shove it down your throat. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, for an actor, delicious, right? Yeah. Because he's so internal. And so, like, that line, get out of my restaurant, was sort of out of character for him, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he got to do... Okay, so I know the two of you, I know um, that Atlas is your favorite character, Colleen. And I know that the two of you got to spend some time together on set. Maybe you were staying in the same hotel or something. You got to hang out. So I want you to tell me one naked truth about each other. Oh, God, that's a tough one. I got one. What's that? Okay. Colleen is... um, an incredible leg wrestler. This is true. I, I can beat pretty much beat anyone. Beat me in leg wrestling. Yeah. She beat a random dude in leg wrestling who was like, he saw me lose and he was like, oh, I can do that. And I was like, knock yourself out, brother, because <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Um, I got strong legs. And she was like, boom, took yeah. me straight down. Yeah. No, I am very you proud of that. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know I want to see it. <laughs> One thing about Brandon, and he he doesn't care if things are closed. Like if bars are closed, he will just go get what he needs. Yeah. So you do that a couple of times. Like when we needed something and the bar was closed, you'd be just like, oh, it's fine. And he'd just go make a drink. Yeah. Let's not tell the hotel that. But. Yeah. Um, okay, so real quick, there's a, there's a onesie scene or a couple onesie scenes in the book and in the film. So if you're going to design your own onesie that really reflected who you are as a person, what do you have on it? Like either shows or movies you're obsessed with or just characters or whatever it is, something from your childhood. What would you have on each of your onesies? Mine would be probably covered in Atlas. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't blame you. (laughs) And Lily. And Lily. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Atlas and Lily. (laughs) Just, um, that's, that's interesting. You know, I, I plants. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot of plants. I have a lot of plants in my house. It'd just be a bunch of plants. Now, I actually, I um, I used to have a My Little Pony onesie that I actually wore to music festivals. Um, random, never seen it, but I wore the hell out of that onesie. Yeah. Man, that'd be such a good outfit for the premiere. Yeah, just a My Little Pony onesie. Gets hot and tied around the can waist. I beg that you wear that to the premiere. Right. I know, right? Yeah. Um, so Brandon, this is a question for you. So I did read the book and, and like I said, I absolutely loved it. And the, the casting was so crucial um, of Atlas that you have to love him from the second he comes on screen. And the second he came on screen in that restaurant, I was like, yep, we're good. <laughs> love him, Thanks. perfect choice. I wanna know for you crafting, crafting Atlas and becoming Atlas, can you just sort of describe maybe your process a little bit of, of becoming him and like getting into his skin? Yeah, I mean, I, um, uh, in terms of getting into it, I, I, kind of similar to what I said before, I mean, I identified with like who he was at his, at his core a lot. So I think it was just amplifying those qualities and sort of forgetting everything else about myself that wasn't applicable, which is really easy. And I, you know, I was like, I'm not, I don't need to change my voice. You know, I'm not like, it's just me. Um, you know, physically, like, yeah, I may I put on a little weight or I was like little things where he's like, I'm not going to show up and be super like lean and tan because these guys, a, he's a chef. He's he doesn't care. I, I want him to feel like he's not trying too hard. You know, you want him to feel safe and you want him to feel comfortable. You want him to feel like someone who doesn't need anything. He's secure. He's not trying to sound too smart or look too good. He's just there. And he's secure in himself. And um, so, yeah, I think that was kind of the thing. And and um, uh, because, you you know, to 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 sort of contrast Justin, who is very angular and like, you know, uh, which I more am naturally, you know, in some ways. uh, But I want them to feel very opposite in that sense. Yeah. Um, And um, yeah, you want him to feel like safe you know, as safe as possible. Um, So just, yeah, trying to get into that as much as I could, Um, which is also beyond the physicals is just an internal process of feeling really secure in general, you know, like me as myself as the actor, Mm -hmm. because if I showed up not feeling that way, he wouldn't feel that way. 
Pauline, I have, one qu I have so many questions for you, uh, but I really <laughs> want to ask you as an author, like as I was reading the book, I'm underlining, I'm circling this, like the line about breaking cycles, I wrote in big letters this, because there are so many things that we can all relate to. My favorite line in the whole book is how could someone with such a great smile have such parents? And <laughs> I can't for the life of me figure out how people function from day to day when they like somebody this much, because I, we've all been there. Yeah. So you as a writer, like when you write those lines, do you know you have something like in those? And how do those lines come to me? I know, I know. Obviously I mean, great. I wish I could say, yeah, but absolutely not. Like I, I suffer from the worst case of imposter syndrome. So I always hope that books land with readers, but it is really fun when they do release and you get to see, like, especially on Goodreads, they show you what are the most highlighted quotes. And so it's always really fun to see what resonates with people because I don't know, you know, which which thoughts will, and you know, cause a lot of thoughts when you're a writer, even when you're writing from the character point of view, you're putting in a lot of your own thoughts into the character as well. So, and I, and I saw a lot of, I think from what I got for your sarcasm, you have a little bit of sarcasm. I saw a lot of you and Lily, I think. <laughs> Listen, Blake is just naturally funny. She brought so much levity to that character. It was so great. I was so excited yeah. to laugh as much as I did. Yeah. So the unwrapped, but I would love it, Brandon, if you'd go out with, you know, what do you like? <laughs> What about you? What do you like? <laughs> I want to see you again. Now you see me. You know what I mean. <laughs> Can we discuss ugly crying and sucking air? Because I understand you did that when you first read the book. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> and I did the same. Watch it. I, I couldn't even. I couldn't even read the words on the pages. It really? was like, was and I'd never had that experience reading a book. And like doing this because every you know how everything gets blurry when you're reading, and I was like wiping, and snots coming out of my nose, and and I'm like trying to read. So the thought was, wow, if, if we could successfully like encapsulate this experience and give a an audience member the chance to have this kind of catharsis, like we could have something really special. And you did it. Well, thank you. That's we did the, it. That's the crazy thing because when I was in the film, and I know you've been there before when I was watching the film, there's those moments where you're like, I'm just. I'm not going to let the tear fall because I've got other things to do today. I cannot be puffy. And then you just surrender and then you're sucking air. I'm very happy that that was the experience for you. And <laughs> uh, there's okay. nothing there's nothing that uh, that a, a, a filmmaker that makes weepy movies like myself wants to hear more than than like the holding back and the holding back and then the damn yeah. releasing. Well, let's talk about, okay, so you bought the rights to the book, your company bought the rights to the book, and you clearly wanted to make it because you loved the book so much. Yes. But like, okay, we'll start with your character. Um, it's my understanding that Colleen actually was her idea that you would play Ryle. It was, it was. Uh, as we were optioning the book, she sent me, she sent like these very long, beautiful emails. So, you know, if you've never uh, exchanged emails with a romance <laughs> novelist, I would suggest it because uh, <laughs> they were gorgeous. I should frame them. Um, but right before we closed on the option, she sent a very short email, which was unlike her. And she asked if I had ever considered acting in the movie. And then she said, playing Ryle, oh. perhaps. And then wow. she said, I could see it, period. Wow. Um, and, and that, because she created this man and this story and if she, and if she felt like I could I could do it justice yeah then in some ways she gave me the confidence to believe that I could as well yeah. when I'm watching like when I was reading the book before I started reading the book I knew the premise and I was like I'm gonna hate Ryle and then when I started watching the movie I'm gonna hate Ryle and you don't mm. because of the complexity of the character so for you as an actor, I mean, particularly, and I don't want to give away any spoilers for people who haven't read the book and they're going to watch the film, but like the hospital scene, when she says something and you give a look, and it's one of my favorite moments because it's utterly heartbreaking. You can't hate him because of the complexity. So, so for you as an actor, can you just to sort of discuss, um, this is a very, very complicated person to play and then directing yourself on top of it. Yeah. I mean, look, Directing is very challenging um, on its own. Acting and directing is even more challenging. And then acting and directing and playing a character like Ryle, you know, you add that in and then you mix that with, you know, the complexities of personalities on set and, you know, trying to manage everybody's expectations and get everybody kind of moving in the same direction. Um, and, you know, it's, Look, every movie has has its challenges, and this one was no different. And yet, oftentimes, it's those challenges 
that end up um, in some way uh, inspiring the most beautiful art. Yeah. And I think that's what happened on this film. And so for me, individually, as a as an actor, you know, what was important for me was to inject as much goodness and humanity in Ryle as possible. Because stepping back from an actor and jumping into the filmmaking role, the only way to make this film work is to stick the landing in the hospital scene. And once you have an amazing ending, I believe you reverse engineer the movie from there. Interesting. And for me, the ending was the most important. But knowing that we need the audience in that moment, in that hospital scene, to not know what decision she's going to make yes. means that there has to have been deep, deep, real love and connection there. And the audience yeah. cannot hate Ryle. And that was the biggest challenge, both as a filmmaker and then stepping in front of the camera as an actor. Yeah. And that meant that we couldn't have, he, we, he, he can't be a villain. Right. He has to be human. And yet what he does in the movie has to be despicable and unforgivable and unexcusable. So in order to protect Lily's character, to protect the arc of the movie, we had to make the relationship between Lily and Ryle as believable and fun and romantic as possible. And then you had to like him. And you had mm -hmm. to, to, in some strange way, even after you know what's happening, want her to end up with him. Because I believe that, that every human being on the planet wants to believe that people can change. Yes. And now I'm not saying that Ryle changed. I right. know that the majority of people that are like Ryle don't, and that is a fact. A lot of work has to happen in rehabilitation for a man like Ryle to truly change. But it doesn't change how much we desperately want it and how much we want her to be happy. Yeah. So that was, that, that was the big thing for me, injecting as much hope and love and uh, uh, charisma in Ryle as possible, and also having anything that happens, anything that he does that is violent in the movie come from a deep place of insecurity, mm. which was not something that I had ever seen done before. Because in my research and in talking to, um, to survivors, the one thing I noticed was that so many of these men are deeply, deeply insecure. And I had never seen somebody do something terrible and also see it from a place of, wow, they're also in pain. Doesn't change what he did, unexcusable, and yet the only way to protect that ending and Lily is if we could go on that journey with her and see Ryle through her eyes. Well, when you're talking about the ending, let's go back to the beginning, because what I really appreciated what you did as a director is you gave the actors moments where in the edit, you allowed a Space. look. This movie hinges, yes, it hinges on nuance. Yes. On Because especially if you read the book, you're waiting for, for Blake to inform you or Brandon to inform you with a look. So can you sort of describe what that was like watching those actors' performances bloom and sort of how you made that choice to edit it that way? Well, it's, again, it's, it goes back to the challenge when you were adapting a novel and turning it into a movie and specifically one that had a deep internal monologue like this one did. Um, so we are in Lily's mind in the book. And then, even more so, we then go into flashbacks in Lily's mind via Lily's journal in the book. Um, and that's a really challenging thing to figure out when it comes to then adapting that and turning it into a movie. And as a filmmaker and as an actor, I love films where um, you don't need the dialogue. You're able to allow a moment to exist with the subtext of maybe what was said in the book, but now exists in an unspoken moment between two characters. And so whenever possible, um, we try to sit as long as we can in the edit and create those moments because those are the films that I like the most because that's life. You're not always talking. You're not always saying something. You don't always have a line. Sometimes you're just looking at another person and there's a lot you want to say but can't. And sometimes you don't even know what you want to say and you're swept up in somebody's eyes. Um, and with romance, I think, you know, in, in my life example, you know, with my wife, we just celebrated 11 years together. Some of the most beautiful moments in my relationship with my wife are moments where there is no words. But there's tons of emotion. 
Um, so Blake, Brandon, these actors had so much emotional richness that it made it easy because you don't have to, you know, I, didn't have, I didn't have to mind the edit for these moments, they were there because they were you know, um, injected into the scene in every moment. And then it was just simply about getting out of the way and allowing the moments. And then whenever we can, one of the things I, one of the things I love to do as a filmmaker is I take dialogue out. If there was a line there, we don't need the line, let's take it out. We can say that with a look. You write it, and then sometimes the writing just becomes the subtext. And that's what we did with this film. We just kept taking things out whenever we could. And then what you were left with were these beautiful moments, this space where we could experience the actors experiencing what the characters were experiencing. Well, I don't know if you could tell, but I was tearing up as you were giving me that answer. Oh. Because those are I'm my a little, kind of- I'm a little too far away from you, but I wish we were in the same room. I know, room. but those, those are my favorite types of movies too, the unspoken, like Lost in Translation is one of my favorite yes. movies of all for that reason. But anyway, I have overstayed my welcome. That Thank inspired you. the karaoke scene, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. How so? The last, this, the Lost in Translation is one of my, that karaoke scene is one of my favorite scenes in that movie. Really? So that was what inspired our karaoke scene, yeah. 